Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, today's still April 9th, Thursday. It's now 2.36. And I've been listening to Israeli News Live. He's got a guest on. There's two parts. They're both about 45 minutes. And I don't normally take that much time on videos. But that's not a real long time. This, this is important. There's... Like I said, two parts. The guest is a doctor. Um, I want you, they play, I'm in part two, and I want you to hear what the CDC has now put out to doctors. Listen to this. Here's the new recommendations from the CDC. That is now starting to spread across the state because I just got a notification from the, I live in Ohio, I live in Cleveland, Ohio. And I just got a notification from the Ohio State Medical Board, who's you know sending out updates. And one of the updates was about how to document a death certificate. And the CDC's new recommendation: wow. if someone is in the hospital with a respiratory issue and they die, even if you have not tested them or they didn't, you did test them and they were not positive, you are supposed to write on the death certificate COVID nineteen as a comorbidity. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this hugely duplicitous? You keep lying. That's the nicest word I could come up with. <laughs> yes, that goes without saying, right? I mean, this is like a I mean, open deception. It's an open deception. It came right straight from the Ohio State Medical Board that said, even if you suspect that it was COVID nineteen, put COVID nineteen on the death certificate. Well, everybody's index of suspicion is really high right now, so they. Okay, so they get into talking about how this is pumping up the numbers. I I mean, I talked about it. We knew it already, but now we've got proof that the this was the Ohio State Board for Doctors putting it out for Ohio. So that came from the CDC, so it goes to stand. It just makes sense that it would be statewide. Countrywide. Okay, I can't summarize everything they've said, but that lady that has the accent on here uh, does most of the talking, and they get into discussing kind of what we've we've heard before. But they drive it home. Like, what is this? Is this a virus? Is this a bioweapon? Is it um, this or that? I can't remember what all they listed. But anyway, they get into talking about how so many die from this and so many die from that. Way more. And regular flu every year. Way more than people who are dying from this. And she said, I'm so tired of people emailing me. Oh, but so-and-so I know is dying from this. And they're really suffering and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, I am sure if they had an underlying condition in their lungs or their heart, they're going to probably, it's like the regular influenza. Their body can't take one more thing. And yes, when you see a loved one struggling, that drives it home more to you that, oh, yeah, this thing is bad and we need to keep everybody from getting it. And they go into how this social distancing is turning everybody afraid of other people. You're afraid to get near other people. And this way you can't get close to another person and say, you know what's going on, don't you? And, you know, kind of whisper... uh you know, and let's plan this and let's plan that. That's why you can't have groups more than 10. And anyway, they get into more like, is this why? They want to, you know, in China, they want, started off wanting to stop all the protesting because they're communists. They don't want protesting going on. Not in Hong Kong and not in the... Um, the people in Wuhan were protesting the 5G. And they 
came up with a way to stop that, you know, and nailed nailed the doors and windows shut in their homes so they couldn't get out if they weren't already in a hospital. Okay, anyway, um, those are just some things that I remember that um, they went over, and I'm just saying this is, especially this part two, urgent information, what is happening part two i'll leave the links to both videos i hope you'll watch them and share them on your if you have facebook if you have twitter anywhere you can all right okay that's i just believe that people need to wake up i like how she calls them sheeply <laughs> the sheeply people <laughs> i don't know what she made me I think she's from Europe somewhere. Anyway, I don't know. Um, could be from Israel. I didn't catch it. Anyway, um, you will enjoy her. She kind of goes off on a rant of her own on num on uh, the first part. And probably will. I haven't finished watching this yet. I just wanted to get it up. So, y'all that are looking for something good to watch this is something good to watch some more information you can share with those you you care about and so maybe they won't be so afraid and germaphobic but she's talking like now they're talking about um I, I, you know i went, had to went, go back to play that part and now they're talking about how if they catch you less than six feet, people can call 311 in some areas. And they're trying to get Trump to sign an order that if you're caught talking to somebody in less than six feet distance, they can call, oh, not wearing a mask. Because it's hard to hear people through a mask, especially if you're six feet apart. You can, but it's hard. I've had a hard time understanding people that were less than six feet away. Anyway, it's just the world we know as we knew it is over. I don't see us going back. So what does that tell you? I think we're more than we're closer today than ever to going home. We need to keep looking up and realizing that the Lord Jesus has us protected. And I just, if it doesn't do anything but calm some fears, I hope it'll do that. Okay? Because there's, it's just like, do you fear every year when the flu season comes around? No. So it's just like that. Do you fear, oh, I got to get in my car and I could get in a car wreck. And some people are that way with planes, but they'll get in a car in a heartbeat. And there's way more car wrecks than there are plane crashes. Anyway, I've said enough. I'm just sharing. And I, I pray that you'll watch these and share them. But also... That you will pray for Steve and this woman whose name I didn't catch. It may be in the description box. Let me see. Um, Dr. Sherry. Or, wait a minute, interview with Jana. Oh, he's got listed here everybody he shared. So, Dr. Sherry could be the one telling about being in Cleveland, interview with Jana, logic before authority. So this one must go into something he said. Mini Van Jack from YouTube. Ten more experts from the Guardian.org and Sherry's Facebook. Okay. So um Anyway, so he does list every link, and I'm not sure if this is, this could be Jana, but I was pretty sure he called her doctor. Anyway, 
I'll plead the blood of Jesus over this video and the internet connection and over myself and my computer and over each and every one of you and your devices and your internet connections and let's just stay prayed up and ready to go home because the signs there's more and more things happening and we are not in the seals there it's just birth pains and the more we have remember Isaiah 66 7 let me pull it up Let's see I have to click on that new tab Oh, I'm always hitting the weather because they're right next to each other. Okay, Isaiah 66. I'm pretty sure it's verse 7. Go. All right. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. And I believe that is talking about before the great tribulation, the bribe, the ones who, the first fruits go first. And so before her pain, the pain of the great tribulation, before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. So let's keep that in mind. And. Luke 21, 36, pray that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that are to come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Okay? With that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.